Hi guys, Scott McConnell here for Distance CME, and hey, guess what? It's Tuesday, so another tips and tricks with Scott. Hey, God, by the way, guys, if uh, you'd like to share any of the tips and tricks that you've worked out over the years, why don't you send them to me? Info, I-N-F-O, at distancecme.com, distancecme.com. All right, well, let's get right into it. Uh, the first thing, for my inner facility folks, I'll tell you, uh, I have found having a couple of extra dead enders, caps for central lines, uh, things like that, those little, those little weird things that only come in packages uh, for central line insertion as an example, that kind of stuff. If you ever can get your hands on a couple of extra ones, trust me, they make great additions to your critical care bag. Okay, just the ability to, oops, we dropped the cap on the floor. Oh, I got extra ones, you know, picking them up and then uh, go ahead and use in those, right? Next thing. Now, uh, some people may find that this does not work for them. This personally works for me. I went to the dollar store and I bought one of those plastic little trays and uh, I took some uh, cups and I use cups to segregate the different uh, things I use for starting IV. So some IV start kits, some two by two, some four by fours, a couple of rolls of tape, uh, you know, the different IV catheter sizes, a couple of syringes, a couple of blunt tip needles, some alcohol preps, some chlorhexidine, um, you know, all in this little tray because I found that when you put the patient into the ambulance, you know, to sit down on the bench sheet, grab the tray, sit it next to you and be able to start an IV is a lot easier quicker and cleaner that way, uh, at least I have found, and it does work pretty well for me, and it costs me a dollar at the dollar store. Uh, by the way, specimen cups make great little dividers. Right? Next thing, communication with your partner. This is going to be key. You know, when you get dispatched to a call, whether it be an inter-facility call, uh, a 911 call, you know, whatever the case may be, as you're going to the call, start talking to your partner. Hey, we're going for a respiratory distress call. You know, when we get there, I'd like you to start setting up the oxygen while I listen to lung sounds. Once the oxygen is on, I'll start taking vital signs. You know, you get a med list, that kind of stuff. That way, boom, 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 boom. Things get done a lot quicker if I know what you expect me to do. You know, that good communication back and forth really does make a call go smoothly. Okay? All right. Know your protocols. Now, I'm sure you've heard that before. Know your protocols. Um, I like to add something maybe slightly different to that, and that is know the limitations of your protocols. Okay, now you may say, well, what exactly do you mean? Well, know the points of your protocols where you should punt to higher medical authority, okay? Uh, you know, in, uh, in Thursday-isms, that's coming up in a couple of days, Thursday, uh, we talk about, um, you know, there's no such thing as a textbook case. And I'll tell you, a lot of times, you know, it just kind of makes sense to do X, Y, and Z. Uh, let's call the medical director first. You know, let's call the hospital and say, hey, doc, listen, I'm, I'm a little stymied here. I have X, Y, and Z. Normally, I would do this. What do you think? You know, Punting that kind of decision when you're unsure or when it's outside of the scope of your protocols is always the best choice. Now, that being said, let me just add one tiny bit to that. Take the time to get to know the doctors in the hospital that you call the most. You know, when I first started as a paramedic, and I'll tell you, I would call for medical direction, medical command. The doctors didn't know me. And nine times out of ten, the... The answer I got was, okay, start an IV and bring them to the hospital. <laughs> you know, didn't really quite work out that way. But, you know, every time I went to the hospital, I made it a point to introduce myself. Get to know the physicians. That way, on the phone, on the radio, if they can put a face to a name, you know, you'll see that you'll start being able to do more and more within the scope of your protocols if you develop that working relationship, don't be intimidated by MD or DO. Trust me, they put their pants on one leg at a time, just like we do. Go over, introduce yourself. 
How you doing, Doc? My name's Scott McConnell. I'm one of the paramedics at St. Luke's EMS. You know, glad to meet you. Shake their hand. That's all. You know, you might even start with, hey, Doc, by the way, I just brought in a patient in a room 22. You know, an SVT. You know, we did this, we did that. And they really appreciate knowing what went on pre-hospitally if they weren't in the room listening to report. Right? Just a little good FYI there. So guys, hey, once again, Scott for Distance CME. Why don't you check us out? DistanceCME.com. Easiest way, literally, for you to research. No missed time from work. Course is offered over and over and over again. Two-hour blocks of time. Starting the month of February, we have courses in the middle of the night. So all you night owls, check us out. DistanceCME.com. Of course, we have courses during the day as well. Guys, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Be safe. Thank you.